everybody. Hi, this is Miley here. Today's video, I'm going to share with you a thousand mile review. So stay tuned. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. This is actually going to be an honest review from somebody who's not trying to be a journalist. So I don't really care what I say. I just give you my honest thoughts of it. So let's get to it. Before we go any further, I was going to give you a look at what I've got here. 2016 Yamaha FZ07, as you can tell by the title, in armor gray. And I'll go ahead and give my comments on the color right now. Uh, I think this color is absolutely beautiful. As far as the wheels, kind of was reluctant to get a very vibrant, high visibility wheel color like this. And they do main, you know, get pretty dirty rather quickly not awful visually other than the things that i've done to improve the motorcycle which you can see in my first build series video here i think that the motorcycle is absolutely perfect with that let's get back to the riding portion of this video I figure i'll have an immediate flat upon leaving this place i'm in an awful spot in the road i'm just gonna have to send it really <laughs> Well, hey, that gives me an excuse to romp on it, which leads me to the first dynamic property of the motorcycle that should be talked about on this thing, and that's what everybody talks about. It's this engine, this torque monster. I've rode punchy motorcycles before. I've rode a Hayabusa. Don't get me wrong, blisteringly fast motorcycle, but as far as accessible, usable, just low-end torque, this thing is unbelievable. I'm not going to make any bold claims and say this is the best engine in all of motorcycling and all of this other junk, but I can say that what it does have is just gobs of low-end torque. The ergonomics and the engine together both provide you with a motorcycle that's very fun to ride, you know, at quarter throttle, half throttle, and very, very comfortable as well. The riding position is not identical to my dual sport, but it's very close. Within 30 seconds, I'm, I'm acclimated to one or the other, and it's just like I've been, that's the only motorcycle I ever ride. As far as the chassis, as I'm in the twisties, it's a good time to talk about it. And of course, you come from anything else, any like flagship model down to this, you're gonna notice a difference, okay? I'm not gonna sugarcoat that, I mean, I, I, I get within 60% of this bike's limits, and I can tell that the suspension would be the limit, limiting factor in any kind of track performance or serious abuse, you know. It doesn't have class-leading suspension by any means, but it's never once limited me to anything I wanted to do. And that's kind of the same way with the brakes. Now, I've never rode anything with radio master cylinders and Brembo calipers and all the high-end flagship model stuff but i've never been let down by these brakes either we can sum up the positive is i like the feel i like the ergonomics of the motorcycle i think you know everything's pretty well where it should be i don't necessarily need a flash to pass button up here or a caution switch down here i don't need either one of those features period and you know what was wrong with having an ignition switch and a start button but you know whatever that's I'm not complaining about any of those things, but, you know, I don't need them. We'll go to my few complaints about the motorcycle. First being, okay, you've heard of Yamaha transmissions, right? If you've been paying attention to motorcycling in the last two years or so, you know about Yamaha's transmissions, the problems they've been having. You know, they had a huge recall on the R1 as it come out in that new generation in 2015, I believe where it had something about it would grenade itself or something. I, I didn't pay much attention. Of course, I didn't own one, so it didn't matter to me. I can tell you, on my 2016 FZ07, which has had an oil change at 500 miles, I use Yamalube and the, Yama, the Yamaha filter, it is considerably more clunky than most other bikes on the road. When you put it in first, I know most bikes clunk in first. This one shakes the entire motorcycle. You'll notice it a lot when you get it up a little bit higher in the RPM range and just pull in the clutch and shift normally. You'll notice how loud it is. If you're just bang shifting it, you know, or it, if you're clutchless shifting it, if you're doing a lot of things, you won't notice it. 
Um, every time you put it in first gear, you'll notice it. And every time you get it up a little bit higher in the rev range and then just normally shift, you'll kind of notice it then too. It's not an issue to where I would want to trade the motorcycle in or take it into the dealer for servicing. I'd like to try to t say that there's a warranty concern. I think it just comes along with the territory and how Yamaha apparently can't put a transmission together that well or can't engineer one well. But it's something to be considered. A lot of the journalists won't tell you that. You know, they'll, they'll tell you all about the motor. They'll tell you all the things that Yamaha tells them, but they won't tell you that the transmission's clunky. You know, and it may be mine. Like I say, it's not bad enough that I would want to take it in and, you know, perhaps risk them turning every nut and bolt on my motorcycle. But, you know, I, I told you I was going to be honest, and there it is. Now, I can honestly say that's about my only complaint. That brings us to the question. Would I recommend this motorcycle to someone? The long answer to a short question is, this motorcycle could fit and have a place in just about any garage. The lack of a top-end rush and makes me believe that it would be very good as a first motorcycle. Maybe one that you might want to take a little bit of caution to. But, you know, it's got a really long throttle throw, so I don't think that it's really snappy. Although you can feel that oh so good and creamy torque and down low it doesn't overwhelm you so so i think that'd be accessible to new new riders and as far as experienced ones if you've got your ten thousand dollar plus sport bike maybe even you've got a flagship model of some kind some kind of thousand cc super sport or something and you park this fz07 beside it and you have to ride it to work I'd be willing to wager which one you'd pick up the key to and get on to go to work on. When it comes time to doing the track stuff and all of that, yeah, get you 1,000cc Super Sport. I'm not going to tell you that this is better than those at, at that environment, but pretty much anywhere else, this thing's hard to beat. It really is. As for me in my garage, I thought that I would take this thing out on the weekends and it, it would be kind of a hard to handle and you know a little bit too intimidating and too uncomfortable for the commute and the truth is when i walk out i've got both my honda key and my yamaha key one of each on this keychain here so i've got the, the option to grab either one when i walk outside in the mornings i'd say 75 percent of the time i can put the key in this one and start it up and it's nothing against my honda because my honda is another motorcycle where for as little money as it costs, it does everything you could ask it to do. But this one, with with all of the character and how much, how cool I feel when I ride it, this usually gets the nod, and it's the one that I crank up and take to work. Maybe this was a little bit of use to you. If you've got the budget and FCL7 sounds like a motorcycle you would like to have, I promise you, you'll enjoy it. If you go and buy the freaking uh, electric glide after watching this video, I'm happy for you, dude. You know, two wheels are the best thing that's ever going to happen to you. With that, I invite you to stick around a little while. Check out some of my other videos. If you feel I deserve it, leave a like. If you want to say something, feel free to leave a comment. I'm all about discussion. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you on the next one, fellas. Have a smiley out.